Hey guys, Sure Midji here. I'm going to be doing a review and shooting test on this JGM4. I got this in a trade. This is a, um, a uh, rental. I'm going to be trading it, or trading or selling either one. I specifically want to sell it. Because, um, I mean, I have this M4 right here. I don't, this is all I need. I don't want another M4 as far as AEGs. Gas pullbacks. I have uh, three Stanag gas pullback rifles. ACR. M16 and PEW. So, um, as far as M4s, though, I only need one. Um, so, uh, this is pretty much bone stock. Um, so, let's just go over it. Um, we're gonna go from start from the back and go to the front. I don't have my chrono because it's out of batteries, but generally JGs right out of the box will shoot upwards to three between 380 and 410. My old JGS system shot like right at 410, 400, right out of the box. It was crazy. Um, and this shoots maybe a little bit less because um, it's so dang old. I think this is the 2010 model, um, which man, is 2016, so, or 15, sorry. Wow. Which is 2016, because I know I'd be a year older and I could vote. Anyways. That's a life goal of mine to vote. Not really, just kidding. Um, so let, again, let's start from the back and go to the front. Now this is a G and G stock. So this stock is really tight on the buffer tube, which is really nice, but standard JG LE stocks have a little bit of wobble, so do keep that in mind, but they're pretty much the same thing. Um, and it depends on what kind of JG you get. Some will come with crane stocks. You get a metal buffer tube here, here with a metal castle nut. And then you get an A2 standard grip. Which as you can see there's a lot of mud on mine. Because um, this was a loaner or a rental. I'm trying to sell this so if I didn't already say that. Um, the body here is plastic. You can get JG uh, metal bodies. Um, on their guns, but this is just your standard plastic receiver. It's kind of a gray, which my S system was gray too, which also leads me to believe that this is the same year. Um, but JG's newer stuff is so much better. This is at least three years old. Um, your standard body, you know, you got your magazine catch here, which is pretty accessible with your pointer finger. Um, it's not bad. I like it. Standard. I mean, that's standard on any M4. Um, no ambidextrous features, your bolt lock here is missing on mine. Now, one thing that's cool about your JGs is that it's a two-piece hop-up, which I actually like. A lot of people don't like it because you, they say you lose compression, which I'm not sure if that's true because these JGs shoot pretty hard. But you pop this pin out, which I don't know if I'll be able to pull out with my fingernails or not. Um... Go ahead and see if I can push it out. I don't have very many, and it's cold out here. I don't have very much fingernail. Like, excuse me. I'll be right back. Grab a stick. No joke. Freaking stick. There we go. So you pop your back pin out, and it splits open like a real gun, which I like, but you still get your gearbox there, which standard version 2 gearbox. This gearbox actually has a micro crack on it. From what I can tell, it has like a crack starting to form. My VFC gearbox has that too. It should last. Um, I think I put a weaker spring in here. I opened it up and greased it like crazy. Um, the compression's pretty good. So I greased it like crazy and I swapped the spring out. It's almost the same. So the FPS and the range and accuracy and everything seems the same from when I took it apart and swapped out the spring and lubed it. Oh. But um, for the most part, it's pretty much just completely stock. I did put a GMP high speed motor in this, but it's a really, really old motor, so it's not getting much speed. It's about the same as the stock one, to be honest. I just kept the stock one because that would be better for like a balance build if I ever build another person a gearbox or something. Now, you do have to keep in mind there are wires here, and these wires will get caught. That's one thing that I don't like, but these receivers are really flexible. So they're not very solid, but they're flexible. There you go. Um, your front pin you can take out and pull the whole upper off. 
um, but you do have wires that go to the front. And then up front you have a standard A1 type, or not A1, A2 I believe, handguard. It's just your standard like carbine length handguard. Also charge panel you know, back here is standard. Um, top rail is standard. It's actually attached. This is a technically a three piece upper to the rail on the top and then two sides. So then this here, which you can put a rail on the bottom. Actually, I don't think you can because this version has like a, the inside is like covered. So I don't think you can add a rail on here, but you can get, you can put a, like a, a separate rail on here, like a KAC style or a free float, which is the better idea to me. Just take out the front sight too. But then you get your standard 14 and a half inch barrel. Um, I don't know if it's two piece. It looks like one piece, but it could be two. It might be two. I don't know. I can't really tell because normally they'll come off here or like right here somewhere. Um, I have a 7.4 in this handguard right now, but you can fit like a 9.6 mini. Um, it is to Dean's. Um, I'm trying to sell this for 100 shipped. That's what I'd like to get out of it. Um, so we're going to go and shoot it. Um, I have .25 loaded in two different magazines, and I have spare ammo right here. Um, so we're going to try it with the 7.4 through one mag, or maybe even two mags. And then we're going to try a GMP 10.8, which this gun could handle a 10.8. Um, out of the box, the JG can handle a 10.8 um, rate of fire wise and stuff. But generally, your trigger contacts will eventually burn out. Um, let's go and turn the camera this way. Target that I'm shooting at, I might take you out there, but you should be able to hear the hits. It's just. Uh, maybe I'll do this one here. It's just uh, wood targets. They're about. A 100, 110 feet from like right here. Um, so let's go ahead and start shooting. I'm just gonna let you look at the gun for now. Um, there's no recoil or anything because it's a standard AEG. Magazine might have a hard time feeding. Magazine trying to feed a little, like loading each round. Turn the hoppers up. Yeah, this magazine's not feeding. In. This is a mag brand magazine. Do keep that in mind. I know this A and K works. This A and K one works in everything. too much. There we go. Full auto. That one only had like 70 rounds. Let's go ahead and try my GMP M or my this custom M4 and see. See, that's, it's, I don't know, it must be the magazine. We'll go ahead and reload this uh, A&K one. Apologize for the bad feeding on the magazine. This one magazine, I don't know, it's been giving me some issues. And this one, I actually took out the follower because somebody on YouTube was like, recommended to take out the follower, and I think that made it worse. So, I'm going to put that follower back in. Let's still use the 7.4. Do keep in mind it's only a 20C. And the FPS is probably 300 with two fives. It's pretty good. Man, that is really, really consistent. All right. Let's go ahead and load up the rest of the magazine and try the GMP 10.8. Now, for those of you that don't know, a GMP 10 or 10.8s in general, no matter what company they are, are not lipos. It's a NIM. This 7420C, uh, the battery is uh, kind of janky. Actually, it's like not wanting to shoot when it's facing a certain way. 
So this GP108 is fully charged. And it's really windy out here and it's starting to rain it looks like. But see I'll show you when this see when it's facing a certain way, it won't fire. It's gotta be pulling be fully pulled down like this. So I think I'm gonna have to tape the connector or something like this and just use it until it breaks even further. All right, let's try the GMP 108 now with the one magazine, the rest of this mag. All right, stock internals, except for the motor, which the motor is GMP, it's the M120 motor. It's like three years old, so it literally is three years old. I got it like three years ago, um, and it's been used heavily with 108s and 74s. It's really not the best. So it can, I mean, that's that's about 20 rounds a second, and it can handle it. So if you put whatever battery you can in your uh, JG, it can handle 20 rounds a second. If you go above that, above 25, you will get issues. If you don't do AOE correct or anything, don't open up the gearbox. Trigger response. Not the best even with the <laughs> with the uh, 10 8 but I mean I think I'm so used to uh, freaking uh, 13 to 1 gears in this instead of stock 18 to 1s. Um, so anyways, if you have any questions, just ask. Like I said, FPS is probably 300 even with the slight kind of... There really wasn't a whole bad of an... There might have been a little bit of an air leak in the nozzle because there's no O-ring in it. But other than that, the compression was all right. you want to see this gun go check out my video i did a video on it before i put the 13 to 1s in there um the rate of fire didn't go up a whole lot to be honest but the response the trigger response went up a lot the rate of fire probably went up three rounds a second but um but do keep in mind the 18 to 1s that i did have had three teeth four teeth removed so that made it cycle faster but this is even faster just a little bit faster um and it's full strokes 13 to 1s it's all right shimmed. I shimmed it myself, but I don't know. It's not bad. Um, it's not. I shouldn't have any issues. That nothing should strip or anything. But do keep in mind, twelve to SHS, twelve to one, thirteen to one, sixteen to one, eighteen to one. Their bevels just suck. So, anyways, I do have a spare classic army bevel to throw in there if it breaks, which it will eventually. So, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, again, it's a JG like 2010 2011 model plastic body version um i recommend them i really do <laughs> my jgs system that i had the shell gearbox shell broke in two and a half years running a 9.6 and getting like 15 rounds a second on that gun um you can do the same on this now the gearbox is really the only thing that i don't like quality wise but i hear that the in 2013 they really upped their gearbox shells because they knew that that was an issue and i know a lot of people two people specifically that literally build um gearboxes out of new jg shells because of how good they are that's what i hear i have a vfc in this and it's got a micro crack so i mean all shells are almost the same some of them have i don't think most of them are cnc'd i don't know the metal processing but some of them are just really cheaply made and they will get destroyed especially if you put a heavier spring inside anyways if you have any questions just put a comment down there and if you liked the video give it a thumbs up give it a like um and if you want to see I'll, I'll post a quick video on this um in poor shooting just probably in my house just dry firing just to kind of show you guys that the rate of fire and trigger response did go up when i installed the 13 one gears over the 18 ones so stay tuned for more videos guys see you later